ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Adrian and I are giving you our 2024 predictions and giving you a chance to win a $100 Visa gift card for Christmas. Enjoy. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> yeah, so you need to redo the en uh, uh, entry music. The pump up music. Merry Christmas, Adrian. <clears throat> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. It's not often the podcast lands on Christmas Day. This is the best way to start your Christmas day. Forget about opening presents under the tree. Just listen to KT Confidential, the real estate podcast. <clears throat> Speaking of which, are we going to poll the audience to see what uh, these hats look like? For those of you that are listening, you will want to watch this episode because we're festive today. Yes. Thank you for that, by the way. What do they look like? Well, to me, it would make sense that it is a reindeer. Makes sense and look like are very different. Right? Like the nose. They do look more reindeer-esque when they're on your head. But... I figure it's an owl if you just hide these anyway. It's not important. How is an owl festive for Christmas? It's not. That's my point. Okay. I guess that's why they were $5. Right. Nobody wanted an owl. They're very soft. Christmas They're nice. owl hat. They're nice. For five bucks, I thought these were a great deal. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Dollarama. That's right. So today we're talking about, uh, actually, I have a special segment I'd like to do today also on uh, a Reddit React thing. I have some posts and comments that I'd like to show you. But our our, our topic of discussion today is our predictions for 2024. The our, 2024 our real estate, real predictions. estate predictions. predictions for 2024. So before we get into that, can I can I ask some festive questions? Okay. Your favorite gift anybody has ever given you for Christmas? I don't know that it was my favorite necessarily. I mean, you know my memory, how it works. Yeah, not so good. But there is one thing I remember when I was a kid. So our tradition when we were kids was, uh, and our parents did this, I'm sure, just to keep us in bed longer, is our stockings were left in our room or at our door. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have to get up and go wake our parents up. So, you know, one year I remember getting my stocking and there was this Batman figurine at a and he had a retractable belt and it was and it was like a belt boomerang thing and it was the coolest toy ever and i remember it i can picture myself playing with this toy and it was like i don't know why it was just so memorable it was really cool worst christmas gift you've ever received i can't answer i don't remember how about you what was your favorite I don't know that I have a favorite or a worst. No. I've received a lot of nice gifts as a child and as an adult. And I don't think any gift is a bad gift because somebody took the time to to think about you and unless it was I think that's the point unless it was somebody who didn't. Right. Right. Or it was like a re-gift. But then do you really remember those? Like my one of my best friends, uh, Phil, he, used to, he would tell me stories about how his grandmother would re-gift him stuff that she used and owned. Like oh, she really? would just buy stuff around the house and wrap it up and give it to him as a gift. I don't know if she was going a bit crazy then or not, but uh, that stuff is funny. Favorite thing to eat around the holidays? Uh, eggnog. I don't eat it, but I drink it, and it's my favorite thing to drink around the holidays. Although I've really cut back. As a kid, I would guzzle a carton in a day. Oh. Yeah. Now I'll have a carton over the course of the month, maybe. How do you drink your eggnog? Just straight? Just straight, non-alcoholic, just eggnog, eggnog. I don't like it with anything in it. And there's different types. Like, you can, depending on where you get it, some of them's creamier than others. Some are... Yeah. You know what I mean? I like the creamy kind. I like the creamy kind, but I put ice cubes in it. Okay. Just to water it down a little bit, keep it nice and cold. Nice. Is that What's your favorite thing to eat? My favorite thing to eat around Christmas? 
So it's actually something that I haven't had in years now. But it was my grandmother's fish soup. So a traditional Christmas Eve meal in my dad, obviously my dad's side of the family, was fried fish, kind of like a schnitzel, but yeah. fish, with some fried potatoes and basically the same meal my, I've made it for you before, the pork schnitzel dinner, typical Hungarian I like dinner it. with fried fish, but it always that meal always started Christmas Eve with fish soup. And we always caught the fish for the soup. So we didn't go and buy the fish. My dad and I would head down to there was a little river in Cambridge. Well, not a little river, the river. Cambridge, yeah, the river, yes. It's actually where I ended up spreading my dad's ashes. Oh, okay, don't tell the municipality that. So we used to go there to catch our carp. The fish was made with carp, right? And my grandmother would use it for the fish soup, and it's spice hot, like spicy hot. Okay. And she would make these noodles. So if there's anybody Hungarian or even Eastern European that's listening to this, they've probably had it. Or if you've been to Hungary in the winter months, it's available at many of the Hungarian restaurants. These thick homemade noodles. And when I mean thick, it would almost be like, imagine if a piece of fettuccine was a square. Okay. Is that like, I'm trying to think of what it, uh, I can't remember. Not spatzel. No. If that's what you're thinking of. No, it's not what I was thinking of, <clears throat> but I can, I can envision it. You've described it. Yeah. Well. A nice, thick, hearty, homemade noodle. And it had this texture that when you put it into the soup, it almost glazed and, absorbed a little bit into that noodle. Yeah. And that soup, everybody in my family always looked forward to because you only have it once once a year. That is special when you do that and have yeah. a tradition. And like it was that. good. Yeah. I actually enjoy turkey now more than I ever used to when I cook it because I brine it and it makes a world of difference. Ever since I started brining my turkeys. Which was last year. Yeah. I've done it twice now because I did it Thanksgiving this year. Yeah. It's like night and day and I really enjoy it. So if you haven't tried that, I recommend it. So we talked about, because you asked me a lot of questions about brining last year. Yeah. How how have you been brining your turkey? Uh, well, they were, both times it was different. The first time, I don't remember exactly what was in it, but it was like brown sugar, molasses, uh, obviously salt, uh, various herbs. Uh, I tried doing it in the sink, but I wasn't comfortable with it because I had a meat thermometer in there to see what temperature it was around. And I had, because you should keep it, at around fridge temperature, like four degrees Celsius or whatever, to prevent bacteria from growing. And then, uh, so I was concerned about that, and also just from being so close to the, in the kitchen, everybody's using the sink and the countertop. So I got a, a b big stock pot from a family member and put it in there and it fit, and it went in the fridge. So that worked. And then this year for Thanksgiving, I did it again, different uh, recipe, just kept it a bit more basic. So I don't remember what I put in it though, it was rosemary bay leaves, salt and sugar. It was more basic. Orange, it was more citrus. It was really good. So. For about 24 I, hours. I typically brine mine in the bar sink because it's a big, deep stainless steel sink. Mm -hmm. And it's away from obviously everything. So if there's any splashes or whatever, don't have to worry about contamination. You can clean it up easily. And then I just maintain that temperature with putting a bucket of ice in it every few hours. And it's always been fine. So 
do you boil your brine first? Um, okay. I feel like I did this year at Thanksgiving. I did. Yes. So, Last year I didn't. So I boil my brine first and then take it down to a cold level by putting it in the fridge for right. the next day. Carrots, onion, and celery. And toasting, I toasted peppercorns and stuff. Ooh, look at you, Mr. Fancy. Carrots, onion, celery, bay leaves, thyme, rosemary, a lot of kosher salt. I use different kinds of sweetener in it, so usually some kind of sugar and some sort of acidic addition. So oftentimes I'll do lemon. Yeah. Lemon juice, lemon peel, and then let the turkey brine for 24 hours. Take it out of the brine, dry it really, really well. I give it a good rinse too. I almost didn't rinse it enough. Yeah. Like it needs a good, otherwise needs it's way good, too salty. Yes. Rinse it off, dry it off really well. And here's the key. After you dry it really well, key to a very crispy yet tenderly delicious turkey. After it's brined and you dry it really well, put it in the fridge uncovered. To dry out more? Yes. Okay. It takes out, and, and usually I put some paper towel underneath, and it takes, because it's now salted, and it's open air refrigeration, it'll dry it out even more. And then when you lather that baby up with some butter, that butter is just going to start caramelizing that fat and render it all down, and it's nice and crispy. And then you get this, right? Thanks for Ian? joining the uh, KT Cooking Show today. For, for more, go to ktconfidential.ca and watch our turkeys roast over the open fire. Yes, that would be good too. All right. Let's get on with it. Okay, predictions. 2024 predictions for the real estate market. Boom! I've heard, <laughs> uh, it's interesting, you know, obviously being in the industry, talking to different people, you know, there's several people I've spoken to who think there's going to be a big boom in the market. Um, I don't believe that whatsoever. Uh, I think a lot of people believe that just because they're hopeful for that because their bank needs it, bank account. But... Um, I, I think it's going to be very much what we've experienced over the last quarter. Um, if you look at, so I was looking at some stats because we all know how accurate stats are from our last podcast. But uh, in 2023, there was 878,000 mortgages renewed, according to CMHC in Canada. In 2024, there's a million fifty nine, so another couple hundred thousand. Um, and these are people that are renewing from like 2019. So the average rate in 2019 was close to 3%. Now they're double. So there's a lot of people that are going to be in a very similar situation to what we've experienced. So I think given all of that, um, I think we're going to experience a very predictable year. Uh, I don't think there's going to be many peaks and valleys in terms of activity or prices. I think prices will be stable. I think they're going to continue to decline uh, for the first half of the year a little bit, but again, more predictable. Whereas this year was a bit more unpredictable, but now I think we've kind of hit that level of uh, stability. Nobody really predicted 2023 at all. No. Could forecast Even that the prices... Accurately, that is. Yeah. Yeah. Could forecast that Mortgage rates are going to come up, which will force the prices to come down. Here's my thought, though. You've got buyers that are confused. They don't know when's the right time to buy. They're afraid of buying now because the prices might come down or that the mortgage rates will still go up. We haven't chatted about mortgage rates. I do still think they will go up a bit. You've got banks that all of a sudden, if you look at the statistics on their income, their earnings, they're down. 
RBC at the end of November said that their profits were down like 25%. Yeah, but that's not bad considering the market's down more than that. Yeah, but if the bank is losing money or not hitting their targets and not satisfying their shareholders, how are they going to make more money? They're going to increase rates. I don't think so. I don't think they'll increase rates. I think they'll decrease rates to be more competitive to get more business. Maybe. But at the end of the day, I think the government, federally, provincially, municipally, they're all um, very committed to making real estate affordable. And uh, But what's affordable? You tell somebody a detached home is $700,000. Well, affordable from the perspective of not, you know... Not um, increasing like it has in the past. dollars mortgage right now is 660 bucks a month. Yeah. So if you need a $500,000 mortgage, which is really a $600,000 or $580,000 purchase with 20% down or whatever that number is, uh, 617,000 bucks, so you buy a $617,000 home, you put 20% down, you have a $500,000 mortgage. Multiply five by 660, your mortgage monthly payment is $3,300. Right. Then you have property taxes, utilities, maintenance, food, gas, say, food. all Life. that stuff. So you're spending just to live and pay your, your home, your bills, all of that, you need... Seven seventy five eight grand net a month. Yeah. That's 140, 150 grand gross. That is more than the average household income, even in Oakville. And that's buying a $620,000 home, which doesn't exist. No. Uh, well, that's the problem that they're facing with first-time home buyers. I mean, if you're in the market, it's all relative. Um. But for first-time home buyers, I think, um, which is interesting because often the rental market and the uh, resale market have some ties to each other, where if one's doing well, the other one's not and vice versa. And whereas right now they're both in a decline, I think it's as people are trying to figure out what to do, where to go. Are my ears floppy? Uh, you're touching your antlers. Those are your antlers. Those oh, are these your, are, those are your ears. ears. Yeah, they these, are. Yeah. These are the ears? Yeah. These are the antlers. <laughs> yes. You should know your body parts by this age. Yeah. Oh, sorry. They're yeah, new. because I have ears and antlers. They're new. Uh, so that's my prediction. I think I think it, it, it'll be more, uh, it will be more predictable. It will be uh, more stable than we've seen as a whole so will this it be, year. Will it be a buyer's market or a seller's market? It'll be a fairly, well, it'll be a buyer's market for, I think, at least the first half. And, I th- and then I think it'll just be fairly balanced. I think it's a good time. Um, you know, I, I don't think there's a good time or bad time to sell. I think it's a, and then if, especially if you're already in the market. So I think if there's people in the market thinking, oh, should I move now? Well, I think there will be more anxiety in the market. Yes. In that, well, I'll give you an example. I do predict that over the months of January and February, Like even this month, but going into January, February, the inventory of homes across the GTA, specifically in our trade areas, Halton and Peel region, will decrease. The amount of inventory will decrease. The amount of buyers will increase because naturally as we go into spring, we're coming out of winter, People get the buying fever. They go buy cars. They buy homes. It's historically one of the busier times of the year. So there will be a point in time, I believe, this winter where there will be more buyers than inventory to supply those buyers, which means we could see, especially if mortgage rates stay steady, we could see a point where there might be bidding wars. 
And then, once that happens, all the sellers are going to think, oh, now is a good time to list our home. And they're all going to do it within a matter of two or three weeks of each other. And then there's going to be an abundance of inventory. Nobody's going to know how to price things. Buyers are going to be sitting on the sidelines again because now all of a sudden it's going to shift to a buyer's market. So while you say stability, I think over the course of the year, so if we look back in 12 months and see the price difference year over year, I think it will be a small percentage of difference and probably just a small increase if you look year over year. Be ready. If you're thinking of, here's my tip, my golden nugget Good year to, to buy. end the year. Yeah, it is. It actually is a very good time to buy. I think this, yeah, well, that's where I think Very it is. good time to buy because your mortgage rate will go down as, like, the chances are, if I was betting, if I was in the casino and betting on mortgage rates, I would bet that over the course of the next few years, this is the highest that you will rate that you will be paying. So I'm, And in the not too distant future, they will be going down. So I have a but very... <laughs> you you interrupted me and, and I want to say this to sellers. And specifically the sellers that are thinking of upgrading because this is a tremendous time to upgrade. You got equity in your home. You need a bigger home, more bedrooms, bigger backyard, more space between your neighbors, whatever. I don't care the reason. You want to upgrade your home? Get your home ready now. Now. Don't wait. If you think that you're going to move in 2024 or even in 2025, if I ask you as a seller, Mr. Seller, Mrs. Seller, If somebody came to you right now wanting to buy your home at the price you want to sell for, would you sell and move now? The answer would probably be yes, if you've been thinking about moving. Here's the thing. With my prediction, what I just said, there will be pockets throughout the year always, where there is low inventory. Lower. Lower inventory. I wouldn't say low. Yes, and I wouldn't say low specifically because there are people that will have to sell for affordability issues. We already see That's it. That's what we're experiencing. Especially investors. Yeah. But if you've got a $1.5 million house, $1 million house, whatever, and you're thinking of upgrading, your home needs to be ready to hit the market within seven to 10 days. Because in 30 days, the market will be different. So don't go out there. I don't shop. know. That's what I'm saying. I don't, I don't agree. I think it'll be more predictable from that perspective. Like I think Ooh, it, for the first time, we don't agree on what's going to happen in 2024. It's already unpredictable, Adrian. No, I do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think it will be. I think in 30 days, it will be predicted. It'll be very much the same. doesn't mean you don't need to be ready. I think you do need to be ready because it's just the process takes I think, longer. I think the prices will more or less be the same, but I think the demand will fluctuate quite a bit. From week to week. From, for sure, from month to month. Yeah. Right now, it's from day to day. So how how much do you think this? So let's we'll look back on this next year on okay. December twenty fourth. Okay. Um, well, a million dollar house today. Yes. What do you think it'll sell for December twenty fourth, twenty twenty four? What do I think it'll sell for if it's worth a million now? And you're talking just average. Yes. Yeah. So if we're talking averages, I would say that the price average 
will increase somewhere around three and a half percent, between three and four percent. That's my guess. Okay. Increase. So thirty to forty thousand dollar increase on your million dollar property. You? I think you'd be lucky to see one percent. I think it'll be the same. I think a million dollar home today is a million dollar home next month. Next well, year. I'd love for everybody listening and watching to leave a comment. Let us know what you think. Maybe we'll we'll do a, a draw, a prize for the closest. Yeah. It's a good idea. Yeah. Here you go. Hundred dollar Visa gift card. That's what I'll put on the table. All right. Hang on, are we taking what, into consideration? What happened to our turkey? Oh, it's gone. It got overcooked. Are we taking into consideration uh, inflation? Because this we're talking about a year in advance. No, nothing inflation related. Just what? What? <laughs> no, the no. I average... mean the gift. Oh, the gift. Yeah. <laughs> Does the gift? Yeah. yeah. Four thousand dollar Visa gift card. Yeah. No, hundred hundred dollar Visa gift card. So if you leave a comment, and I don't care where you leave that comment, something obviously related to this. Hey, did you do podcast. that cast? No, I'm trying to. I want, I'm doing that intentionally. You kicked me out. Oh, he wants to pull up Reddit. Yeah. Now it's disappeared. I don't see it anymore. Did you change it? I can't see the Apple TV. Do you know why? Anyway, I don't know what Adrian wants to pull up here. I don't know, but it's... It's not letting me. He's giving me shit for putting the TV away for the last number of podcasts, and it occasionally comes in handy. So we, can, I mean, you look at any a lot of podcasts; they have a TV there, not for the audience, but for the. We'll consider that when we move. Yeah, did you hear? Oh, We're there, moving. It's, it's back. Okay, Ian, don't touch it. All right, all right. So there, there's Holy our predictions. Holy fuck! That's your desktop. Oh, they're all screenshots. I just delete them. Oh, bro. Every week. Okay. So, hang on. I need to go to the bottom one. Look at that. That is so cluttered. How do you... Oh, Jesus. And they're all screenshots. I just go into my... Delete half of I them don't care what they this. are. All right. So I was in Reddit. Reddit's a fun uh, medium to dive into, obviously, as everyone knows. But it's hard to find good stuff. But I came across this post today. I thought it'd be fun just to go through some of the responses okay. before we wrap this sure. up. So this is somebody po somebody's post. It says, my real estate agent has gold medal business cards. Gold medal business cards. All right, so here's a picture of it. Buying, selling, investing, elite principal agent. I mean, I'm assuming this is not this is somewhere in the Canadian States. because yeah. you can't have that. I mean, some people may do it and just it's anyways. So here are some of the responses elite. to this. That's why elite. I have a gold one. That's right. And I'm sure it's brass. If you describe yourself as elite, you probably aren't. That's so true. So true. Even for people that are bragging about being in the top one percent. Is it true? Narcissistic vibes as fuck. Your real estate agent is a cock. <laughs> <laughs> I would agree. Run. Uh, this guy wanks in the mirror, never losing eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. I can smell their fake tan through the pictures. Oh, yeah. That's the that's best funny. right there. That goes back to your comment at the meeting yeah. the other day. It's so they can chop up the cocaine easier. Oh, yeah. Don't have to use your driver's you license can anymore. You could reuse it then too, right? Uh, if you throw it, you can stun someone. I suppose it acts as a weapon. Your real estate agent's a wanker. A lot of talk about wanking. Uh, tell me you're a douchebag without telling me you're a douchebag. Look at this guy's name, dick in your mouth. <laughs> That's so funny. Just make sure you don't have any milk in the fridge. That's <laughs> unrelated to the post, I think. But remember, remember that? Oh, someone took over again. I don't know what happened. Anyways, that was it. Those are the responses. Well, Merry Christmas, Adrian. I wish you, your family, all your loved ones. Here's a, to a thank are you. We're gonna cheers to water. Likewise. Here's to a excellent 2024. Yeah, it is water. 2023 was okay. It was okay. A year I'd like to just forget about. Be done with. Yeah. I think a lot of people feel the same way. I think so too. And it's snowing. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. It is Christmas. Have a good one. Merry Christmas. See ya. Don't forget to leave your comment. Let us know your prediction for your chance to win. Show us some love for Christmas. Give us that thumbs up. 
notification bell on, subscribe. We love you. Have a wonderful Christmas and a happy new year from the KT team and KT Confidential, the real estate podcast.